Hello guys and welcome back to the next part of our training seminar. Uh, today's seminar we're going to be talking about balance and stability training. And the tagline today is what the heck is proprioception? And we want to, um, as always, we're going to talk about balance and training real generally. This is a fairly brief, um, you know, kind of seminar topic. And the, the, the goal is to give you a basis for what balance and stability training is. Whenever you work with us on a one-on-one -on -one basis and we personalize your program, balance and stability is a part of your workout. We just want this to be an opportunity to tell you why it's important, why you need to have it, and um, so when you start utilizing our, our personalized services or utilize balance and stability training into your own workouts that you understand what it is. So let's talk about balance for a second. Balance training. What exactly balance training is? Well, a lot of times when people think about balance training, what they think about or, or anything balanced, they think about like standing on one foot, um, you know, just standing on one foot. Um, and seeing how long they can balance on one particular leg or, or that. That's a kind of a rough um, clarification of what most people think, but I don't think that's too far from the truth when reality is balance is a functional movement because balance, when you're thinking about it, you know, balance, you're continue, you know, you're utilizing, let's say, let's take walking for, for an example. When you're walking, it's a continual motion of walking on one leg at a time. But when we break down balance and you think about balance about stabilizing or balancing on one foot, the, the reality is, is that walking or any functional movement is nothing but a balance activity because you're constantly shifting your weight, you're constantly balancing on one foot, and although you may not be holding that for you know, a long time, um, although it may not be static in nature, you are in a constant balance state because you're constantly shifting your weight. And that may be you know, something that uh, may be a second, it may be a split of the second, but you are um, in a balanced state whenever you are doing anything in a movement-oriented pattern. So let's look at you know, what exactly, uh, I wanna talk about exact um, definitions about what stability and proprioception are. Um, but the, the most important things is I want to define balance and balance um, the most you know the, the best way to look at it it's in all things it's not a static movement you can train yourself to be more balanced doing statically oriented things but it is a continuous movement so the terms that I want to use is you have this reciprocal thing of things that happen whenever you move whenever you're moving you're having what's called force production and force reduction. So whenever you walk, there's certain muscles that have to work in order to move in that particular movement, and there's certain muscles that have to lengthen or stretch to reduce force along with produce force. That's in any movement what has to take place. It's the, the production and reduction of force in order to produce a movement. Now, in between that, if you think of a cycle, in between that, what causes you to make that movement are two very important things. There's core stabilization and there's neuromuscular stabilization. And basically what that means is if, you're, if there's a breakdown in your core and your core is not stable, if neuromuscularly, the, the, re, the relationship between nervous system, muscular system, and throughout your entire body, if that is not stable, then the movement patterns, force production and reduction, are going to be affected. So I, I, I just want you to, before we get further into this, get you to understand that balance is incorporated into movement, and movement is nothing but balance, because it's impossible to walk with two feet at the same time. One foot has to leave in order to do any sort of movement at all. And it's very important that we understand that balance isn't just static, like that it's also in movement too. And I said that very, very many times so we get that point home. And I hope I've shown you why it's more in movement. So let's look at what the definition of stability is. And like always, I have a few notes written down so I, I may look away for a little bit. But the definition of stability is the ability of the body to, moon, to maintain postural equilibrium and support support joints during movement. The ability of the body to maintain postural equilibrium and support joints during movement. So that's what, this is, this is about stability and balance. So really the, the importance of stability is postural 
alignment. When we talk about shoulders being in the right position, core being in the right position, hips being in the right position, knees, ankles, during movement, if those are able to maintain their appropriate posture or equilibrium being towards the center and not too far away, and everything is appropriate there, and if joints are being able to be supported, if there's not, you know, if the knee caves in at the joint, it's not because there's a weak knee, it's because the muscles that are supporting that and everything above and below that knee are affecting that. So equilibrium wise, if, the, if everything is established posturally and joint support is there, then, and you're able to move, then there's good stability. That's what stability is. Now, another thing important to note on that is you may be able to just walk or move, let's say I move sideways or lunge sideways, and, and my stability is good. If you start adding external weight, the stability may decrease. So just because you're able to move in a certain pattern with a certain stability with no weight, it doesn't mean that when a external force is added to you that you may not be able then to maintain stability. So stability is varied based on a number of different factors, based on your range of motion, based on your plane of motion, going sideways, rotating, based on external forces, but that is what stability is. So our, so our goal is to improve stability and balance. Now we have this term called proprioception, and what exactly is proprioception? Because it's one of the greatest ways to improve balance and stabilization. The definition of proprioception, as I'm going to read it, is the, it's the cumulative neural input from the, from the sensory afferents to the central nervous system. The best way for me to, to tell you that is in order for your limbs to move, it, there's this thing that happens where, where your brain and your nervous system has to take information, put it into your central nervous system so it's put out into your limbs for it to move and then your limb sends information back into your central nervous system with information telling it how it needs to move appropriately. So, the, the, I guess the best way to look at this is the better of a relationship between your mind, your limbs, your central nervous system, the better the body is going to be able to adapt to its surroundings, causing your body to be more stable and balanced, if, if that makes sense. Um, the best way for me to, to get um, to explain that is if you're walking on pavement, uh, walking on a flat surface, your body is used to that. Your body's used to walking on pavement or flat surface. So the brain sends conditions out, you know, from the central nervous system out to the limbs. The limbs sense, okay, I've done this before. I've walked this way. I'm used to this. It sends that information back into the central nervous system, and you walk because you're used to it. And no problems. But let's say you're walking down a street. All of a sudden, you step into sand. Guess what happens? Your body gets all out of balance. It gets all out of whack because all of a sudden you've changed its its balance. It's you've changed its stability, and therefore, because the body is not used to, or the the signals are not used to be, you know, brought to the nervous system, out to the limbs, back to the nervous system, it's not used to be able to function and perform on a different surface than it's comfortable. So your body has to adapt, adjust do all this and all of a sudden it's like, okay, I was on a stable surface, now I'm on an unstable surface, I don't know how to react and adjust, so it has, to, it, and that takes training. It takes training for your body to get used to balanced and stable versus unbalanced and unstable surfaces. So balanced training, what, what, is, most, um, what is most common in training is feet flat on the ground, on a flat surface, moving your limbs in this manner. What is uncommon is single leg movements or standing on what we call a proprioceptively enriched environment. Things that are unstable, such as a BOSU ball or a balance pad or on one leg or moving in a different plane of motion, sideways twisting. That's something that your body has not usually been trained to do because the nervous system and your brain is used to moving in one particular movement. So when you start doing unstable or unbalanced activities, and then you go back to what we talked about, the definition of stability, maintaining 
postural equal, equilibrium and supporting joints during movement. If you can do unstable things or unbalanced things in different planes of motion and you're able to maintain postural equilibrium and good joint motion, you have improved balance and stability. You've instantly done that. And But the thing is, is that once you start doing balance training, once you start doing these unbalanced, unstable, in different planes of motion, you're going to notice that it's going to be very difficult. So like any other training, your body's going to have to adapt, adjust, as long as you are making sure that your posture, your joint motion, that's, that's all appropriate, your body will adapt and adjust, and all of a sudden you have better balance and stabilization. And so that is the scientific rationale for why we do it. Now, um, different ways that you can do balance training is uh, balance and stability training. How do you become more balanced and stable? I've got a few things written down that I'm going to read off. Um, it can be multiplanural, which means that it doesn't have to be just straight ahead, moving sideways, twisting, rotating. That's something that your body, your nervous system, your neuromuscular system is not used to. So going sideways, rotating, twisting, that can improve balance and stability. Um, we've already talked about proprioceptively enriched environments, meaning that you can stand on unbalanced surfaces. You can stand on a pillow and your body is not used to that feeling because it's not flat. So therefore it has to um, get used to that. You have to maintain good, good postural alignment, you have to have good joint movement, but all of that is going to come into um, you know, doing things. You can be in a gym standing on a BOSU ball, a balance pad, um, that's another um, thing too. And of course, single leg movements, doing anything single leg. Now you can do single, you can really take it up a notch. You can do single leg in a proprioceptively enriched environment and then your other parts of your body can move away from its midline or rotate and twist. And that's when you really get into some hardcore stability oriented, balance oriented training. Um, in balance and stability training, there's appropriate progression. So it's not just you know, just doing static things. Anything dynamic that we've mentioned is a, is a form of balance. So with any of the other training, what we would do as your coach is try to put you through those different progressions so it continuously got more and more difficult as you progress forward uh, with you know, normal progressions like you would have in, every, in anything. You can vary the speeds in order to you know, uh, make stability and balance training more difficult. You know, um, in the beginning, it's going to be more static in nature, but as your body becomes more used to you know, being in an unbalanced, unstable environment and you can maintain postural and equilibrium and joint movement, then if you start increasing speeds, that's going to make it more difficult. So you can increase speeds as well. Um, but, you know, and a lot of it's all going to come back to you know, input into your central nervous system and and balance training really fills in the gaps from traditional training. I, I've said many times that I do not believe that machines are good for either beginners, deconditioned, those recovering from injuries, or athletes. Because those most machines move in one plane of motion, they stabilize the weight for you, and there's no work on balance, stabilization, or any of that. Machines are perfect for bodybuilders, they're perfect for people wanting to build muscle, lose fat, but when you're in an environment where you're trying to become more functional, more dynamic, more stable, more balanced, more have greater core stabilization, balance and stability training fills in the gaps that traditional training does not do. I hope that gives you the rationale. I really look forward to either having you work with a fitness professional in your own gym or work with us and have us in integrate some of this balance training into your workouts and see the benefits that can come into that. I appreciate you joining us today. Have a great day. You feel there's something wrong I'm telling you again